We turn now to the other breaking news we're monitoring from the border, where thousands of migrants from that caravan have now arrived. Some of them breaking through Mexico's police lines in Tijuana. You see that they're surging into the no man's land in between the two countries. U.S. agents reportedly responding with tear gas and completely shutting down the busy crossing near San Diego. The army now reporting members of the military are on the scene. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez is there. Tonight, chaos erupting on the border. Hundreds of migrants rushing to cross into the U.S. from Mexico. The group pushing past Mexican authorities in riot gear, climbing over barricades. One group attempting to climb on top of this train where they were confronted by Mexican police. At one point, migrants retreating after reports of border agents throwing tear gas canisters. And it is a tense situation here right now. These Mexican police in riot gear pushing this group of migrants back. They are yelling at the officers, angry because they say that tear gas injured two children earlier today. This video showing migrants running through traffic at the entrance to the border. The U.S. Border Patrol shutting down the San Ysidro port of entry to cars and pedestrians. It's unknown if anyone made it across. Additional officers were deployed to stave off the crowds. The latest clashes come after continued threats by President Trump to Mexico. And we will close entry into the country for a period of time until we can get it under control. The, entire border. the whole border. I mean the whole border. This morning, senators from his own party responding. Well, we would prefer that we keep it open, so let's work really hard to make sure we're addressing the asylum seekers before they actually come over the border. I think that's the intent of the president, is to, to divert any issues before they actually happen. So... Of course, we don't want to see the border closed, but you know what? Safety of our nation comes first. This morning, Trump again blaming Democrats for the Central American caravan, tweeting, would be very smart if Mexico would stop the caravans long before they get to our southern border, or if originating countries would not let them form. No crossings. Tonight, as the border grows more unruly and officers stand their ground, Tijuana's mayor calling it a humanitarian crisis, as questions increase looking for solutions to to calm the situation. And tonight, U.S. Customs and Border Protection saying that point of entry has reopened, adding everyone who tried to cross illegally through those vehicle lanes was sent back. Tom. Marcy Gonzalez reporting tonight from Tijuana, Mexico. Marcy, thank you. This is CNN Breaking News. We want to welcome our viewers in the United States and around the world. I'm Ana Cabrera in New York. Thank you for being here. Our breaking news at the southern border. The Mexican government now says it is going to deport 500 migrants who just hours ago tried to rush the border near San Diego at the San Ysidro port of entry. <laughs> That crossing, the busiest in the Western Hemisphere, only partially reopened last hour. In a statement tonight, the Department of Homeland Security says the migrants sought to harm Customs and Border personnel by throwing projectiles at them. And the agency warns the U.S. won't tolerate this type of lawlessness and will not hesitate to shut down other ports of entry. Tonight, additional agents are now headed to the border as patrol helicopters stalk from overhead. For his part, President Trump has threatened to close the entire southern border if the U.S. and Mexico cannot broker a deal on how to handle asylum seekers. CNN's Nick Watt is live at the San Ysidro crossing for us. Nick, what more are you seeing right now? Well, listen, this is, Anna, one of the busiest border crossings in the world, and particularly busy this weekend with Thanksgiving, with people coming back and forth now. This border crossing was closed to vehicles and pedestrians for around four hours. It just reopened about a little over an hour ago. The road, which is just up there, the five freeway is still closed. In fact, when I was driving down here earlier this afternoon, the roadblock was more than two miles back from the border. That's where they were diverting people from. They obviously did not want a big mess of people here causing problems. There were a few hundred people waiting in line to cross. Now, I have now spoken to people who were stuck on the Mexico side who have come across, and one man told me that he doesn't think it was quite as many as 500 people who managed to get past those Mexican authorities and try to storm the border. Kirsten Nielsen has said that they were trying to climb what she describes as legacy fencing. So I'm assuming that is older fencing, perhaps the kind of fencing that the president wants to replace. And she also said that they were trying to harm CBP officers by throwing projectiles at them. We do not have any evidence of that. But eyewitnesses, freelance journalists who are working with us, who were on the scene, 
said that tear gas was fired from the US side. Now, as I say, this border is now open again after this incident. And listen, President Trump said just last Thursday that if, the, if there comes a situation where the US uh, officials feel that they're maybe losing control of the border, that there's a danger somebody's going to get hurt, he said, we will temporarily close the border. And that is exactly what they did today. Anna? Nick Watt, please stay with me. I also want to bring in CNN's Rafael Romo. Uh, Rafael, this decision by the Mexican government to now deport the 500 or so people who were rushing that border comes after loud complaints by the mayor of Tijuana. What more can you tell us? Yeah, that's right. And, uh, mayor Juan Manuel Gastelum has been bitterly complaining since Friday, saying his city doesn't have the resources to provide food, shelter, medical services to more than 6,000 immigrants. He says he refuses to use local taxpayers' money to pay for these expenses and is asking the Mexican federal government and the United Nations for help. Now, the migrants were generally well received in southern and central Mexico, but the situation has been very different at the border where local residents have been uh, very vocal and antagonistic about their presence. The Tijuana mayor also said that he doesn't want the chaotic situation that ensued at the border Sunday morning to in any way harm the good relationship there has been between his city and San Diego. Many people in Tijuana have, as you know, Ana, relatives in San Diego and the other way around. There are also strong business ties between both cities and, and the mayor expressed concern about what kind of impact the group of migrants rushing the U.S. border might have on those relations, Anna. And, and Nick, DHS now saying it is sending additional agents tonight to the border. What kind of show of force are you seeing there? Well, well go ahead, I'm sorry, Nick. I thought that was for me. Uh, well, I mean, the CBP said that they did beef up their uh, deployments here in advance of today because they knew that there were going to be demonstrations on both sides of the border. So they had extra personnel here. Now, of course, there are also U.S. Army troops, U.S. soldiers deployed on the border right now. There are about 1,500 of them in California. I did not see any evidence of them today, but there was plenty of presence on the ground from the CBP, helicopters above. And as I say, they kept people well back. They kept that roadblock well, well back. Anna. So there's this issue of what's happening right now, this immediate moment there on the border. There's also the larger picture about what's going to happen as more and more people try to seek asylum in the U.S. We've now learned that there is a reported deal between President Trump and the incoming Mexican government. Rafael, any word on, on what this deal may look like? And I understand Mexico is pushing back to a degree. Yeah, that's right. We reached to the uh, transition team of uh, President-elect Andres Manuel López Obrador, and they say, listen, we're not even in power yet. Uh, he is not going to be sworn in until December 1st, next Saturday, so there could not be any formal deal between his government or the government that he will form and the United States. And he also said that the president-elect has been very clear that he doesn't want Mexico to become sort of a waiting room for Central American migrants who want to uh, claim asylum status in the United States, sort of like a holding territory for these migrants. But in any case, we know that there have been different meetings between officials on the U.S. side and the Mexican side and the government of President-elect Andres Manuel López Obrador. So it doesn't really mean that there couldn't be a deal. It's just that they say there's not one officially just yet. Um, Rafael, what's your sense about this potential deal? Obviously, there are outstanding issues between the U.S. and Mexico, not just on immigration itself, but on trade. Is there an extra incentive for Mexico to be trying to maybe sweeten their relationship up in order to get something uh, back on their end? Well, the reality is that this situation is costing the Mexican government money. They have had to provide for shelter, for food in different stages of the Karen throughout the country. And uh, I could possibly see a situation where there's some sort of uh, financial aid from the United States to take care of these immigrants in exchange for them staying in Mexico. I'm not saying that that has happened, but that's a possibility, a possibility of what could happen. Uh, the other point here is that uh, the Mexican government has also said that they're going to reinforce security at the border, sending more federal police, uh, sending more military, although they're careful to say that they are not going to be 
armed police officers. So in a way, they're going to just block the access to the American side, but not in any way, shape or form, uh, try to go beyond that point, Anna. All right, Rafael Romo, Nick Watt, thank you both for your reporting. Breaking news tonight on a U.S.-Mexico border crossing where a dramatic scene played out earlier today. This hour, the U.S. is reopening the pedestrian and vehicle access to the San Ysidro port of entry near San Diego. Now, Mexico's government says it is going to deport the 500 or so Central American migrants who just hours ago tried to rush the border. Many of these migrants were fleeing violence in their home countries. I want to show you some powerful video showing what happened. This video shot by Wendy Fry. She is a reporter for the San Diego Union Tribune, and she's joining us now. Wendy, what what was it like when this clash happened? Hi, Anna. Well, it was pretty chaotic, pretty scary right in those moments. Um, we, at first, I was shooting video of the migrants that had, everyone sort of ran in all different directions. And so my photographer ran in one direction. I ran in another direction following a group that was heading to the border, trying to get to the line of the border. And um, then when those shots, it was actually flashbangs. But when they, when we heard them, it, it wasn't very clear what was going on if we were being, if the border patrol, the U.S. border patrol was shooting at the group of migrants or what it was. After a few seconds, of course, we realized they were flashbangs, you know, um, non-lethal explosives meant to scare people back. Um, and also tear gas was thrown at the group that was trying to cross over. They were sort of trying to tear a hole or tear back the fencing a little bit right there in San Isidro where the border is. And that's the way that the U.S. Border Patrol responded is by uh, firing off flashbangs and then the tear gas. So we all, I was following this group of migrants, women and children. They ran underneath a train to hide because at first they did not understand if it was real fire, real gunfire or not. Very scary. A little child was wailing, very scared moment. Wow. But um, after that, we kind of realized everything that was meant to push them back away from the border. Well, we're looking at your video, and I just want to pause for a moment and listen uh, to give our viewers a, a greater sense of what happened there. So, Wendy, we can certainly hear the tension, the fear, the yelling, the chaos. Uh, we did see in some video earlier, there, it did appear that there were objects being thrown, but did you see any weapons used during this clash? Right. So I think this was just a little bit earlier prior to when this group got actually to the actual border fence to the line. So what I think you're playing is before earlier when the federal police, the Mexican federal police, were trying to hold the group back. It was about 500 or so. And keep in mind, I can only tell you what happened where I was. Yeah. But the larger groups ran in all different directions. So something else may have been happening in other places. But where I was, there was a clash between a group trying to run past the line of the Mexican federal police. They did get into a scuffle there. Um, the group has said over and over again this prior week, I've been down here this whole week, and they've been saying that they want to keep things peaceful. They've been reminding each other when they get frustrated, when they get too hot-headed, uh-uh, calm it down, calm it down. I think what he was saying there is, you know, this federal police is trying to antagonize me a little bit, and, and I'm not, you know, they did get into a scuffle. That federal police officer actually ended up with a bloody lip. Um, oh. But then the rest of the group went ahead and ran around them and it dissipated right then and, and there. So why was there was there nobody this, arrested. Why was there this break for the border? Because as you mentioned, a lot of these migrants have been there for some time. What was it about the timing now for them to make this huge rush? Most of them have been telling me that they were waiting for everybody to get here to Tijuana. And most of them have, from the caravan have arrived here, mostly 
and the, now they're starting these demonstrations. So they also did a demonstration on Thanksgiving Day. It was much more peaceful, much more calm. That demonstration, it was just basically slowly and peacefully walking to the line. Today, this demonstration obviously uh, got a lot more heated, a lot more tense. I did see people throwing rocks at Border Patrol. A couple, three or four men were throwing rocks, trying over the fence at Border Patrol. And, and again, that's just what I saw. There may have been people ahead of them throwing more rocks or weapons, and there may have been people behind. But where I was, there were a few throwing rocks, yeah. Also, Wendy, now we're learning that the Mexican government is saying they're going to try to track down the people who tried to rush the border, who were throwing those right. rocks, who were part of this, I guess you could call it a scuffle of sorts or a clash. Right. Have you seen them take any action now to actually come and round up some of those individuals? No, I have not yet seen them gather these individuals from today, but they have already deported about 100 or so um, on, you know, they detained them on suspicion of public intoxication or disturbing the peace, and they have deported them back. And they, they warned them on Thursday night into Friday morning when they stayed the night um, in the pedestrian plaza for a, a demonstration. They said, you're having an unlawful assembly, and we're going to detain the people who are doing the unlawful activity and deport them. So that's one of the ways that the Mexican authorities are trying to keep peace and trying to keep a handle on this situation, control over this situation here, um, where they were vastly unprepared for the numbers of migrants that have come into the city. Uh, that's one of the ways that they're trying to keep a handle is by, you know, saying if you do anything that yeah. is a, a, a violation, we're going to deport you. A quick answer, if you will, real quick, Wendy. Yeah. But do you get a sense of what their plan is next, what the migrants there are going to do now? They were pretty disappointed today. They, When they started out, they were praying. They really thought God was with them and they were going to cross the border. That was their thinking. Um, and today they're just kind of gathering, I think, very disappointed. I do think that they will continue to try to press to the border um, and other demonstrations. So that's one of those things we're going to have to wait and see. Yep. All right, Wendy Fry, I really right. appreciate it. Thank you so much for the insight and good reporting. Thank you, Anna. We'll be right back.